4.7 million people blog on a regular basis. Content's one of the best ways to grow a business, generate traffic, leads, or if you're a freelancer, it's an amazing way to generate income. But just like anything, it's a skill and it does take a long time to learn and master. I've been content writing for eight to nine years. I've written for Neil Patel, Marketo, GoDaddy, tons of big businesses. And honestly, I still feel like I'm learning today and getting better. But I do have a really good process down. I'm able to rank my own website and clients on the first page of Google for pretty much any keyword and really grow my own and my clients' businesses strictly through content. Now in today's video, I wanna share five of my best ways that I personally write content. These are gonna be five of my best content writing tips you can use today. Number one is beginning with the end in mind because I don't know about you, when I was writing content in the beginning, when I was a newbie, I would usually just jump right into content and copy. I wouldn't really have any kind of research done, any kind of plan, and then you always end up hitting writer's block. You start writing and you just end up on that blank white screen of death. One thing that I really recommend to avoid writer's block and to speed up your workflow is starting with an outline. So what I like personally doing before I write any piece of content, web page, piece of copy, anything, is I make a Google Doc and I'll put in the intro, the conclusion, all of the major points I wanna cover, the minor points. I'll usually put in the references, data, and things I wanna source in there as well. And even if you just took a few minutes before you write any piece of content, suddenly you have everything mapped out in front of you. You don't have to worry about sitting there and thinking, okay, what am I gonna write about next? Because that's a really common problem that if you're a writer, you know this happens all the time. But with an outline, it completely skips over that and you're able just to write really smoothly and fast because you know everything you're writing ahead of time. Number two is always do keyword research beforehand. Now, anytime I'm writing a piece of content for my own business or one of my clients, I will put hours into topic research and keyword research because you need to find a topic that's really relevant to the audience and the buyer persona. You wanna make sure that you're essentially driving the highest quality traffic and not just bringing anyone to the website, but also you need to find keywords that that specific website can rank for. It has to have low competition. The domain authority has to match the search difficulty. Now, for example, if you're in Moz, Ahrefs, Uber Suggest, pretty much any kind of modern SEO tool, when you look up a keyword, it'll give you a keyword difficulty and not the paid difficulty. We're looking for the search difficulty, how difficult it would be to rank for that organically in the SERPs. Now, for example, if your domain authority is 40, now you typically wanna target keywords that are a 40 difficulty or lower. It's a pretty cool thing I learned from an SEO guy named Chase Rayner. You should definitely check out his YouTube channel. I've learned tons from him when it comes to search marketing. But also with keywords, you wanna understand exactly what people are looking for and then matching the search intent. So if someone's looking up, how do you do SEO? Then clearly that's looking for an information guide, a tutorial, a how-to. That's what we call an informational keyword. But if someone's looking up the best SEO tools under $100, that's transactional. Someone's looking to actually buy an SEO tool and they want a review, a comparison, or a list article. And then you also have navigational keywords. This is when someone's looking up a very specific brand or product name. And this is really good when you have that brand awareness and that company already established. You can use these all throughout your website and content. So when people are looking up that brand, they can find you. And then when you actually have the keywords researched for a piece of content, I want you to include them in the title, the URL, within the body of the content, within header tags, and then make sure you're also putting it in the metadata, specifically the meta description and a title tag. Thirdly, I want you to make sure that you're integrating lead magnets into content, because if you're content writing for your own business or for a client, it actually has to do something. And the unfortunate part about a lot of content on the internet, and I see this with a lot of my clients when they come to me, is you can have the best content in the world, but if it doesn't align with the funnel, it's just not gonna do anything. So a lead magnet is essentially a free piece of content or resource that you give to people in exchange for their information. If you've ever been on a website and asked you to plug in your email for a newsletter sign up, a free ebook, a free course, that's a lead magnet. If you go to a website like HubSpot, I think they're the best at this. Every single blog post has a lead magnet based on that specific topic. So if you read something on accounting, it'll have an accounting spreadsheet. If you read something on email marketing, there'll be an email marketing template. So that increases their conversion rates the most. Fourthly, long form content is in. There's tons of data over the years that has found the number one result on Google is 1,890 words long. Other data says it's 2,450. And frankly, this number is only really going up because long form content is really in demand and it generates traffic and results. So more companies are producing these two, three, 4,000 word blog posts, and then it causes more competition to write that much or more. And even myself, when I'm on Google and I'm scanning competitors, sometimes there's these 7,500, 10,000 word, 15,000 word articles 
and it's really only going up. This goes back to my first point about making that outline. When you're writing three, 4,000 words, that can seem pretty intimidating, but honestly, if you write that outline first and you know that you have 10 points and you're gonna write two to 300 words under each section, it makes it a lot easier. I also recommend looking into time management tips like Pomodoro technique, where you essentially work for 25 minutes, hyper-focus, take a five minute break, work for 25 minutes again, take that break and you keep increasing the break time until it's about 20, 30 minutes and reset the whole thing. You can use a website like Pomodoro Timer to make this process completely automated. Last but not least, make the content practical and actionable. The thing is with a lot of content on the internet, there's millions and millions of posts going out pretty much every single day. A lot of them aren't all that good because they aren't practical. You can't just tell someone to do X, Y, Z, but then not actually show them. And one of the best ways to actually separate your content from the internet, everything that's out there, the competitors, and really make a lasting impact on the readers that consume it is making it actionable. So instead of just saying to do something, actually show them how to do it step by step. Lead them through everything, even if it seems really minimal or nuanced, and then also use screenshots and videos and GIFs to show them visually how to pull it off. This is amazing too, because people will read the piece of content and instead of thinking, okay, like what do I have to do next? How do I actually implement this? And then they click the back button, go to Google and go to your competitor. They get it all in one spot and they're just gonna have a much better impression of your business. You're gonna really help them out and they'll be more likely to convert for that lead magnet because you made a really good first impression. Content writing is a skill that you have to master. It's part art, part science. You need formulas and templates. You need that outline, as I mentioned. So if you wanna learn more about content writing, you can go into the description, get my full blog blog post where I go over 15 of my best content writing tips. This will help you improve your workflow, the results you generate from content and more. I also have a copywriting and content marketing course you can get for free in the description as well. Let me know though what kind of content and videos you'd like to see from this channel in the comments below and also your opinion and how you like to approach content writing. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you pretty soon.